whole purpose here of this study is to analyze the feasibility of taking reclaimed water, which right now is just used for sprinkler systems, irrigation, and treat that water through a multi-step process and to create a water that's so pure that we can match the water that's in the aquifer and use this water to pump down into the ground and recharge the water that gets depleted out of the aquifer when we pump it out for wells or drinking. My name is Carl Allison. I'm with the City of Clearwater. What we're looking at here, this is the, the first step of our four steps of filtration in a five-stage treatment process. Our first step here is ultrafiltration. Um, there's a lot of machinery and mechanics behind me, but really everything, the filter is inside here. This pressure vessel holds, I think, thousands of long, thin straws that filter out any particulate matter out of the water. That's our first step, is ultrafiltration. This is the second step of our process, is reverse osmosis. After the ultrafiltration step, the water goes to an equalization tank and then is fed under pressure across a reverse osmosis membrane. And what this does is it forces the water through the membrane that only the water molecules can fit through. And this will filter out any salts, any other dissolved solids. Um, viruses are too large to fit through the reverse osmosis membrane. Um, so this is uh, the next step in our filtration and the most important in removal of anything that's in the water that shouldn't be there. It's taken out in the reverse osmosis process. This brings us to the third step in our process, which is advanced oxidation and ultraviolet light. Kind of two steps rolled into one. The feed water coming from the reverse osmosis runs through these sets of tubes, and if you can see that stainless steel tube down there, there's an array of ultraviolet light tubes in there. The water, as it passes across those light tubes, we also feed hydrogen peroxide into the water. What this does is the hydrogen peroxide molecule binds with any organic molecules in the water and under the ultraviolet light, it destroys any organics at the molecular level, like zaps them apart and they explode. So it'll destroy any organics that might have made it through. Any other steps in the process will be destroyed by the ultraviolet light and the peroxide. That ultraviolet light's 100 times stronger than the sun and these processes are commonly used in hospitals and doctor's offices to sterilize medical equipment, so that's pretty neat. Advanced oxidation and ultraviolet light. This is the fourth step in our process. This is the micro contactor. What we're using this contactor for is to remove oxygen from the water. Oxygen is an oxidizer. We know what oxidizers do. If you leave metal out in the rain, oxygen gets to it, it rusts. The same thing will happen in water. Water that has oxygen in it can oxidize things. So if we were to inject the water back into the aquifer as is, highly purified, the oxygen content of it alone would start to oxidize metals that naturally exist inside the limestone. And those metals would migrate out into liquid form and could possibly get into our drinking water. So we don't want that to happen. So to prevent that from happening, we want to remove all the oxygen from the water. We're using nitrogen as a sweep gas to remove oxygen from the water. This is the end of our four-step process of preparing the water. We have step five, is what we call our post-treatment. If we sent the water straight back into the aquifer as is, with no oxygen, it's, this, the water still, it's so pure that it's not balanced. And what it's going to try to do is the water's going to naturally try to leach out calcium and other chemicals out of the limestone in order to balance itself. Um, the water is almost too pure, or aggressive water is a common name in the industry for it. So we have to balance the water um, before it gets injected back into the aquifer. And our balancing process is pretty simple. We feed um, hydrated calcium, calcium hydroxide or lime, into the water to balance out its alkalinity. Um, we also treat with sodium bisulfide to remove any trace bits of hydrogen peroxide that may have made it through the UV system. Also, if there's any um, uh, trace chlorines that may have made it through, that bolus bisulfide will remove those as well. So our post-treatment process, again, it's two pieces. It's the calcium hydroxide or lime to balance the alkalinity and the sodium bisulfide to make sure we're removing 
any peroxide and chlorine that might be left over in a residual. At this phase in the pilot process, we're treating about 20,000 gallons of water a day. And right now, this water is going right back into our reuse system. If the pilot is successful and all the, the data pans out and the approvals are all in place that we need, um, we would like to see the ability to put this water back and recharge the aquifer and re-nourish the aquifer.